Pousse Oh Attention Hop Attention Hop Attention Hop Attention Hop We have developed a containerized model to provide villages in sub-Saharan Africa with electricity. We have noticed, though, that with electricity only, we will not be able to operate profitably in rural areas in Africa, as the costs to build a complete electricity network are relatively high. This is why we searched for further revenue sources regarding how we can refine electricity. So now we operate as a supplier, offering a basic infrastructure of electricity, water, freezer chain and the internet. Regarding water, we are now noticing in the Sahel region increasing levels of salination in the existing wells, which makes it difficult for the people to farm their land. There, we have drinking water treatment plants and desalination plants for very low investment costs and we can now help the farmers to farm their land as well as supplying them with clean water. In sub-Saharan Africa, there is nearly an 85% rate of subsistence farming, which means that people eat what they cultivate. There is also the situation in some regions, for example in Mali, where nearly 70% of the harvest is lost, as there is no freezer chain because there is no electricity. So we close this freezer chain gap with our new product in the Kultainer and offer people the chance to store their vegetables, fruits, fish and meat products temporarily until they are sold on the market or in the next major city. There are huge value chains that we are exploring. People can generate four or five times more income as there is less food loss. The access to knowledge is decisive in all areas. Education is key to reducing the birth rate to a reasonable level and to help women to understand that offering two children education is better than having eight children and six of them contribute to the family's poverty. This is why education in Africa now is the key to solving a lot of problems and the best way we can provide education in rural areas is by giving people access to information. This can be provided through the internet. There is a cost-free access to education and we have the connection to satellite networks with which we can offer internet access through Wi-Fi networks. We have the public benefit where people donate money and then receive a receipt that reduces their tax liability. And we have these pure investments, meanwhile slightly more augmented by the subject of ESG investing. But there are still investors who want to know, how much money do I own? What's the ROI? Today, we learnt ROI was yesterday, RIO is tomorrow, which is the return of real impact outcome. And that is exactly our subject. We believe that we should not only measure the yield through the amount of money or the interest, but also through what impact the money actually makes. And we can perfectly well produce this impact in regions with serious problems and where it is most needed and necessary. We also have to make sure that we do not lose sight of the geopolitical context, and this is where our approach begins. We would like the investors to assess this, or at least consider that when investing we produce impact, and that the return need not be so high. Otherwise, it would be unfair to the people we invest in. 
We have to focus more on these contexts and see what we want as an investor. Investors, at least those that I speak to, some 70% of the people, say, I want my money to bring about something good. And this impact should be measurable. We don't just close our eyes and say, well, actually, I want interest. So there is a contradiction with many investors, especially those in Germany. In other countries and regions, they are more advanced.